Hey everybody, uh, welcome back. We are here to start the fifth unit, and today we're going to talk all about the Pythagorean theorem and its converse. All right, we got a ruler today, guys. It's a little classy today. All right, so anyway. Pythagorean theorem, um, I assume most of you have already seen this before, and you know it deals with right triangles, and what it tells us is that if we're given a right triangle, right, and we're given two of the three sides, we can find that third side, okay? It has to be a right triangle for that to work. Uh, and there's a few things we should, we should note, is that in a right triangle, when we're using the Pythagorean theorem, it assumes we can identify the legs and the hypotenuse. So, in this instance, A and B represent the leg, and the leg, and C represents the hypotenuse. And I'll remind you the hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle, and it is also going to be, let me zoom in here so you can see that a little better, it's also going to be the longest side, okay? So given that, it would be A squared plus B squared equals C squared, so the sum of the two legs squared, sorry, each leg squared added together equals the hypotenuse squared. So be careful my order of operations here. All right, so let's do an example of this, right? So let's, let's go ahead and start off with a right triangle. All right, we're told it's a right triangle, right? And we have four and seven are here, and we don't know what this is. So we can identify four and seven as our legs, okay? So I always like to write my formula because I know it, it just helps me remember it. I'm going to go ahead and plug these numbers in. So four squared plus seven squared equals c squared. Four squared is 16. 7 squared is 49. We add those together and we're going to get 65. So we have 65 equals c squared. Well, we're not done because we want c. We don't want c squared. So we're going to do the square root of both sides. And we're going to have c equals six, radical 65. Now, the square root of 65 is awfully close to the number 8. We know this because square root of 64, right, is 8. It's a perfect square. So radical 65 is just past that, so this would be you know, 8 point something, very close to 8. That's estimation of radicals. We cannot simplify that, though, unfortunately. All right, let's try another example. So let's go with this one. We're going to go with another right triangle. We're told it's a right triangle. Okay. We have 6 and 8. We're looking for that. So again, it looks like we have both legs. We're looking for the hypotenuse. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We're going to go ahead and plug these in. So 6 squared plus 8 squared equals c squared. 6 squared is 36. 8 squared is 64. And add those together, we're going to get 100. And then we're going to do the square root of both sides. Now this is interesting, square root of 100. That's actually a perfect square. We know that square root of 100 is actually 10. So c in this case is equal to 10. We don't have a unit of measurement here, it looks like. So, oh well. This is radical 65 up here. Okay. All right. Cool. Let's try one more. Here we go. <clears throat> okay. So we have example three here. And we have another right triangle. And we're told this is four, this is five, and we don't know what this is. So again, we have the two legs. So A and B and C. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So let's plug these in. We're going to have 4 squared plus 5 squared equals c squared. 4 squared is 16. And 5 squared is 25. Add those together. We're going to get radical 41. OK. And that cannot be simplified. If we were to estimate that, well, that would be between radical 36 and radical 49. So it would be in between 6 and 7. So, and it looks like it's slightly closer to 6, so I don't know, 6.4, 6.3. Uh, we could simplify that, well not simplify, we could estimate that more accurately, but we're not going to do that just yet. We will eventually get to that. Alright, let's see here. Uh, let's go along with, yeah, let's try one, let's try one where we don't have one of the legs. Let's try one of those. So example 4. So now, this is going to be a little different. It's a right triangle, we know that because it's a right angle there. But this time we're given the hypotenuse. So we're given the hypotenuse in one of the legs. Okay, fair enough. So now we're gonna go ahead and solve this the exact same way though. So a squared plus b squared 
equals c squared. All right, uh, a is eight, so eight squared plus b squared equals 12 squared. Eight squared is 64, and b squared and 12 squared is 144. So we're going to subtract 64 from both sides. And that's going to give us b squared equals 80. So now we're going to square root both sides. And b is equal to radical 80. Now we're not done though, because radical 80 can be simplified. So we're going to go ahead and do a factor tree. So, okay. So radical 80, uh, let's see, 80 is divisible by 2, so 2 and 40. 2 is a prime number, so we stop there. 40 is divisible by 2, so 2 and 20. And there's different ways you could do this. You don't have to do it too. There's, there's other options at your disposal, other roads you might take, as Boromir said. All right, so done 10 is divisible by 2 and 5. There you go. Okay, so 1, 2, 3. Okay, so there's four twos and there's a single 5. So we're going to list these out. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. And as the square root, so we're circling the pairs. We're looking for the pairs of numbers. And for each pair, we're going to write one on the outside, and they disappear on the inside. So 2 times 2 on the outside, these are gone, and it's still 5. And then 2 times 2 is 4, so 4 radical 5. So radical 80 is also equal to 4 radical 5, and that would be our answer for simplifying, which we are here. Okay. Let's go ahead and do another example. Okay. So this is the fifth one, example 5. So we have another right triangle. Okay, and we're given hypotenuse, we're given one of the legs, and we're looking for the other side. So we're going to have a squared, b squared, c squared. Okay, so let's write out a formula. And in this case, we're going to have 15 squared e plus b squared equals 20 squared. So 15 squared is 225, plus b squared equals 400. And we're going to solve this algebraically, so we're going to subtract 225 from both sides. So b squared will be equal to 175. And then we're going to radical both sides. So radical, we're going to take the square root of both sides. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to have b equals radical 175. Uh, we can simplify that, actually. So that's divisible by 5, and I, I have a feeling that it's going to be divisible by 25, which is a perfect square. So that means we can simplify this. So let's go ahead and divide that. So 5 divides 175 35 times. Let's see, 5, 25, yeah, 35 times. And 35 is divisible by 5 and 7. Okay, so we circle our factors, our prime factors. We list that out, 5 times 5 times 7. Circle that, cancels out, 5 radical 7. There you go. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, how do we know this is divisible by 25? Think of this as $1.75, right? There's quarters that go into that. You can think about how many quarters that would take. It would be 7 quarters, right? So 7 times 25 equals 175. I had, that's how I thought of it, because it was money. Also, it's divisible by 5. It's worth checking out to see if it's divisible by 25, or by 10, not by 10. I have a 25 is plenty. So anyway, it's just worth checking out. Um, don't just assume it's not something you can, you can simplify. Just try it, and if you can't, you can't. So 5 radical 7. All right, that covers how we're going to be using the Pythagorean theorem. However, I want to go over the converse with you. It shouldn't take too long. So the converse is, is literally switching things around. That's what converse means, aside from shoes, okay? Um, it's when you want to show whether or not something is a right triangle, right? So, because if, if a triangle is right, then the Pythagorean theorem would, would function. That's the converse, essentially. Let's do an example of what I mean. I think that'll make more sense, what I'm trying to say. Let's say we have a triangle, and we're trying to determine whether or not it is a right triangle. So we're going to say, is this a right triangle? Is this a right triangle? All right, so we can tell if it's a right triangle or not by just simply assigning the values into the Pythagorean theorem and seeing if it works. And in this case, we have to look at what the largest side is. And here our largest side is 12. So that would have to be our hypotenuse if this is a right triangle. The remaining two sides would be our legs. Okay? So now we're going to go ahead and test this out. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So our a is 9. Our b is four, and our C is 12. So if this works, that means it is a right triangle. So nine squared is 81, four squared is 16, 
and 12 squares is 144. And then 16 plus 81 is going to be 97. So clearly this is not a right triangle because this does not work. So we'd say no, not a right triangle because the Pythagorean theorem did not work. Now, there's something we should note that there are relationships that exist here. Okay. So if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, it's a right triangle. If a squared plus b squared is less than c squared, it is obtuse. If a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared, it is a, an acute triangle. So let's look at this. So this is our a squared plus b squared right here. So this is. So this side was greater. So a squared, a squared plus b squared was greater. So if a squared plus b squared is greater, that means this is actually a, it is an acute triangle. And there we go. So this is how you figure that out, this little uh, chart here. So you want to either write that down or commit that to memory. I always forget that. I always have to check that, to be honest. All right, so hopefully that answers any questions you guys might have. And I posted an assignment. It isn't due till Thursday, so you have plenty of time to work on it because there's quite a bit on it. Right, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, guys.